What's going on guys? I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. You're a returning subscriber as always, guys. Welcome back. Well, guys, the state of Pennsylvania can breathe a little easier today. Being that last night, accused of uh, murder, an ex-convict that has been on the run for two weeks in the state of Pennsylvania. His name is uh, Danilo Cavalcante. He has been apprehended by police. Now, I'm going to play a small uh, video clip of this guy and how they caught him. It's about three minutes long. It's the press conference by the, I think it's a, uh, somebody from the state police. They give you all the answers you need. Let's take it away. As you know, we have been uh, working most recently in a uh, perimeter established in northern Chester County. Last night, shortly after midnight, a series of events started to unfold. First, we, uh, we had a uh, burglar alarm at a residence near Prizer Road within the perimeter. Uh, our people investigated that, did not, uh, did not find Cavalcante there or anyone else, but it brought, it started to bring some of our people into that area. Uh, we had been searching an area not far from there already with some tactical teams that night. There was uh, an aircraft overhead utilizing uh, FLIR technology and uh, close to 1 a.m. picked up a heat signal that they began to track. It was west of PA 100 and north of Prizer Road. Tactical teams began to converge on that location where the heat source was moving. Uh, unfortunately, we had a weather system that also came in and we had lightning that was flashing all around and it caused the aircraft to have to depart the area. Tactical teams made a decision to uh, secure that area, that smaller area as best they could and hold it through the storm and until uh, we could bring additional resources in and bring aircraft back overhead to ensure that we did not have uh, an issue with an escape. That resumed early this morning, and shortly after 8 a.m., tactical teams converged on the area where the uh, heat source was. They were able to move in very quietly. They had the element of surprise. Cavalcante did not realize he was surrounded until that had occurred. That did not stop him from trying to escape. He began to crawl through thick underbrush, taking his rifle with him as he went. One of the Customs and Border Control teams, BORTAC, uh, had a dog with them. They released the dog. Some of our PSP CERT members were also there, had him surrounded. The dog sub subdued him, and team members from both of those teams immediately moved in. He continued to resist but was uh, forcibly taken into custody. No one was injured as a result of that. Excuse me. He did sustain uh, a minor bite wound. Uh, we had uh, medical uh, personnel at the scene and they, uh, they took a look at that. Cavalcante was, as I said, taken into custody. He was transported to our Avondale station for further processing and interview and he will ultimately be transferred to a state correctional institute where he will be housed and begin to serve his life sentence. All right, guys, that's the news. Danilo uh, Cavalcante has been apprehended after a 14-day uh, search for him since he escaped from jail. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't cover this story for two reasons. One, it was running for a while and it would be a lot to catch up on and then start relaying it. Number two, I didn't think it would take 14 days to catch this man. Usually an escaped person, they get caught within four days, a week. But lately we've been seeing a whole bunch of people just escaping and just being out there in the world. And these massive men have to start. You get desensitized to it sometimes, which you shouldn't be because there are people that are out there that are frightened. Like the case of the sister of... Uh, the girlfriend who he killed. And I want to tell you something. This guy was a monster. He was. Supposedly he was a neighbor to a woman. He was a next door neighbor. 
He was supposed to be kind, gentle, whatever. Met each other, hooked up, started dating each other. She had a four-year-old and a seven-year-old at the time. This woman he was dating said he would drink and turn into a different person, become abusive. Said but when he was, wasn't drinking, he was very nice. Said he was kind of quiet, but, you know, nobody thought nothing of it. So one day they get into it. He's drinking. He stabs the mother 38 times in front of her four and seven year old child. I don't understand it. I never understand it. But anyway, he was convicted and this happened in 2021. He got convicted and he just escaped. Now he's caught. Now, my thing is this. I wonder if they're going to send him back to the same place. You know what I mean? You escape from prison or whatever. I wonder if they send him back to the same place initially or they just have him in some type of holding place where they can send him to some more secure location or prison. That's just something. I mean, maybe somebody in the uh, justice system that watches me can answer that in the comments. But that was just a question I had. I don't know. But um, they caught him. This guy had a terrifying uh, presence about him from those who know him close. Supposedly, the four and seven year old, which are older now, because that was in 2021, the sisters uh, taking care of them. And he said they all barricaded in the house and feared over the past two weeks. So, I mean, now they can get some rest and some peace a little bit. Their life can go back to a little bit of normalcy. But um, he's apprehended. He's out of there. You know, I don't know what makes people do what they do. Fits of rage. I seen the statistic one time and I'm probably going to butcher this, but it said, you know, 70 percent or 80 percent. I think it was 80 percent of most violent crimes between men and women are crimes of passion. Said he was very jealous, extremely jealous. He would always threaten. Remember, I said there are certain signs you have to uh, pay attention to. It might be a slight comment, but if it's a repetitive slight comment, it sounds the same. You got to be looking out. Said he would always tell her, I'll do the worst to you. You ever cheat on me? I'll do the worst. Why would you put that in the air for that to even come into fruition? I'm just saying, anyway, this piece of crap is locked back up. and Hopefully he'll stay locked up this time. And uh, people will learn from this. We got a lot of escapees running around here right now. My thing is this, too, with him. Another reason why I said he's going to get caught, he's hanging around the area. They said he stole a van. If you stole a van, and some of you guys know, I would have rode that thing till it ran out of gas. I'd have left the state or went somewhere else out of the vicinity. They're going to start in a small area. They're going to fan out slowly. He could have been, he could have been gone. And he speaks Spanish and he's Hispanic looking. He could have went to any city. Well, let me, why am I giving it? You know what I'm saying? It's just dumb. Like when they showed the map of where he was at, I'm like, that's stupid. Two weeks he was in that area. You wanted to get caught, bro. But anyway, they said uh, he was caught with a dog. Dog found him. They had a perimeter. Said he was like somebody that was out in the wilderness for a while. And he looked stressed out. You would be stressed out on the run. I'm just saying. Anyway, leave me a comment, man. You guys tell me what you think. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.